Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be analyzing the prerequisite essentials one needs before docking. And this involves finding the active sites of the protein. For this, I'll be demonstrating two methods. You could use any one depending on your requirement. The first method involves use of CastP server. CastP is an online server that is freely available. I have mentioned all the links that you will be needing in the description below, so you need not worry. Now, let's get started. First, we need to download a protein from Protein Data Bank. As an example now, I am downloading the crystal structure of COVID-19 main protease in complex with an inhibitor. We always download the protein structures in complex with an inhibitor as it is useful during docking. You could get the active sites by reading the paper linked to the structure, but it is not always that you'll get a paper linked or the active sites mentioned. And that is the whole point that I'm making this tutorial. You have to download this in PDB format. Here at CASP, you can either enter the PDB ID or even upload. We'll upload the PDB structure by going to calculation and upload it from here. After uploading, you need not change anything. As you can see, the radius probe is 1.4 angstroms by default. You keep it same and click on submit. You can see there's a link, but uh, you should not click on it immediately as it requires time to process. Give it a few seconds and then you can click on it. As you can see, our results are ready. This is the structure that we had uploaded. And here you can see if you scroll down, these are the active sites that we'll be needing. As you can see, the residues are repeated, only the sequence ID changes. So you have to write it only once and not mention all the sequence IDs. You can see the entire table for yourself here. All the residues are predicted as the active sites and we can use this. The only disadvantage sometime during docking is that CASP gives a large number of results and it is not feasible working with a large number of residues, especially in flexible docking if you're using auto dock. So we need to use another method in this case and I'll be demonstrating that as well. The second strategy involves using PyMol. So we need to upload a structure here, rather open it. You can open it by going to file. Yeah, now you can see the structure has opened. So the first thing we need to do is remove water. We go here to A that stands for action and click on remove water. After removing water, then you, as you can see, the inhibitor is here and we need the residues which are around the inhibitor. So for this, you go to actions again, select preset and ligands. Now you can see the view is better. Still, you can make the view cl more clearer by hiding the protein backbone which is right now in the ribbon form for that you need to go to hide and say ribbon as now you can see only the amino acid residues that are interacting with the inhibitor are present to find these residues you have to click on them Click on all the residues close to the inhibitor. I won't be clicking on all the residues for now to show you all. I'll be clicking only on some residues. Okay, 
So now after selecting these residues, you see a selection tab has appeared over here. If you click on it, the selected residues disappear. Click on it again, they appear again. Now you go to label for the selection tab and say residues. You can see the residues are labeled now. Now to note them down, you can do one thing, go to hide here for all and say hide everything. And then you come click on selection tab to hide the points and then say show. And you can go to label and you can see all the residues that were labeled are here. You can zoom in and note these residues down and use it while docking. These are the active sites in the protein. Another important thing that you need to know is during docking, we need files in various formats and this software Open Babel is really useful in converting file formats. You can download it from here. I have mentioned this link as well in the description. Okay, so for example, where we can use Open Babel, let's say that we need a decant, say amantidine. Now you can download this ligand from pubchem you need the 3d structure so click on 3d structure wait till it appears download we'll be downloading the sdf file Yeah, so for docking, we need files that are either in PDB format or PDB QT format. And since the ligand is in the SDF format, we'll be converting it into PDB using the Open Barrel software. Here you can see the input and output formats. There are a number of formats as you can see. So it is really helpful while docking. Since our ligand is in SDF mole format, we'll click on it. The software prepares itself and then you click here to upload. After uploading, you can see the file appears here in a format. And then you see the output format since we need PDB or we'll be do it, doing it in the PDB QT format only. It's not a problem. You have to name the file first. So let's say I name it AMAN dot PDB QT. The extensions are really important so never forget to put them. You can see there are a lot of parameters here these are all helpful and i'll be making a tutorial on this only right now we don't need it so click on convert and our file has been converted you need not worry the output file is auto saved in the folder where the sdf file was there so you can rather procure it from the same folder so that is the end of the tutorial if you found this video helpful, please press the like button, share the video and also subscribe to my channel for videos like this. Thank you for watching.